So I'd like to listen to some of the, the, the samples coming from this model. These are uh, trained on lots of piano performances um, with velocity and timing. And um, I think that compared to the quality at least we've been able to get on Magenta with, with musical scores that aren't performed, we can actually train these models much better and get a lot more out of them. And um, we're in the midst of analyzing why we think that's happening. But give these a listen. Let's, uh, let's dive in. So that piece was unconditionally sampled from the model, meaning uh, just one note was fed in and it was allowed to move in some direction that made sense. Certainly there's some musical arc there. Here's another sample. That first model, the first sample I played actually was um, done by a, an earlier version of the model that didn't um, pay attention to velocity. It pays attention to time. That is to say it can, it can advance time at the millisecond level and if, if you're, you can kind of hear it, it doesn't quite get the tempo right, but the velocities are all fixed. Now I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear with the sound when I play the next sample that you should also hear a kind of m movement in terms of when things get louder and softer. And um, it allows, uh, to my ear at least, the playing to sound more delicate because that sort of is an indicator of what it would be to play delicately. play. Okay, so you're thinking, great, game over, it's done. Let's move on, we've finished with music and now we can move on to something else like video. Actually, no, there's a serious, serious limitations to what we can do with a recurrent neural network like this. Um, I put up two of the piano rolls from what you just heard on the top. Notice, by the way, that uh, occasionally the model forgets to turn on a note off, so the notes just stay on. Those are those horizontal lines. And on the bottom is the Chopin etude we listened to to start with. And I think even with your eyes, you can see all of the rich structure, the repetition, the patterning that's happening in a long composition, and we're nowhere near capturing that. So this, what we're moving is towards trying to understand how we can also pay attention to these, these longer arcs of meaning that are everywhere. They're in music, they're in, they're in literature, they're in art, and um, they're very, very, very hard to capture with, 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 with deep learning. So um, we still have a lot of work to do.